We're in the park in Fukuoka. It's our last morning here before we leave for Osaka. So I thought before we go, I'd just give you a quick guide to Fukuoka. Lots of people visit places like Osaka and Kyoto. So Fukuoka might not be somewhere you think of visiting. So should you go there? As tourism to Japan increases, the popular places are becoming more crowded. So by going somewhere that isn't on everyone's itinerary, you can have a more meaningful, authentic experience. When I was planning this trip, first I looked at Okinawa, but I actually found more things I wanted to do in Kyushu. This area of Japan has a lot of volcanic activity. That's why it has so many onsen, so many hot spring baths. And it also means there's lots of really interesting natural places to see. And I'll tell you about them in a minute. And there's videos about lots of the places I mentioned on my channel. And there's new Japan videos every Thursday. Now we've been here for four days and the evening before and that's nowhere near long enough to get to know a city properly so I can't say I really know it but I thought I'd share with you what I've learned from being here for this short time as a visitor and from researching my trip in case it helps if you're thinking of visiting Fukuoka as well. Fukuoka is on Kyushu which is the southernmost of the main group of Japan's islands. There's also Okinawa which is a lot further south in the sea. What? They're all in the sea. <laughs> <laughs> Fukuoka is at the top of Kyushu and it's the main city, the biggest one, and it's the sixth largest city in Japan. First thing, here's a quick overview of the main areas in Fukuoka just to help you get your bearings. Tenjin is the city centre where all the main shops are. Then you've got a sort of river that runs through Fukuoka. In the middle of that is a place called Nakasu and that's the sort of nightlife district with lots of bars, it really comes alive at night with lots of lights and that's where you can find those yatai which are a special thing in Fukuoka, they're food stalls that set up for the evening and people sit around really cosy and have a meal and drinks. And then you've got the seaside areas where we went to Momochi Seaside Park and then there's a bit that sticks out and that's Umi no Nakamichi, it's a difficult name, <laughs> which is another seaside park. That is kind of out of the way when you're in the main city. You have to take a couple of trains to get to that bit, but it's a day out if you want to go there. And then in the bay, there's a couple of islands. The main one is Nokonoshima, and there's also Shika Island, Shikanoshima, and that's at the end of Umi no Nakamichi Seaside Park. And you can get ferries from the mainland to Nokonoshima and also to Umi no Nakamichi Seaside Park. That was really nice when we did that the other day. Next, day trips. There are things to do in Fukuoka, but it's not sort of packed with activities and things to see like somewhere like Kyoto is. So it's, I think it's a good base to stay and go on day trips to other places. And that's what we've used it as a sort of place to stay while we explore the rest of Kyushu. Now, looking back, I think if you were staying somewhere like Kumamoto, that might be a more convenient place for exploring the whole of Kyushu because it's in the middle. It's not so difficult to get over to the east side. Um, but Fukuoka has been pretty good for that and it means the way you're staying there's lots of places to eat and lots around you when you get home in the evening. Day trips we've been on are to the Beppu Hells. There's also Yufuin around there which I didn't go to but a lot of people said it's less touristy. It's an onsen town with old streets and buildings and is apparently really beautiful. I didn't go there because the train or bus ride whichever it is it was a bit long from Beppu so it seemed like a lot to do for one day but I think a lot of people stay there in a traditional hotel where else have we been what do we do the next day for you Sa 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 oh yeah. yeah we've also been to Sakurajima which is an active volcano at the bottom of Kyushu you get to that from Kagoshima at the bottom of the Shinkansen line and we also went to Yanagawa and Dezaifu now Dezaifu is a really popular day trip all the trip reports I read, people had always gone to it. It's got quite a big temple there and an old street and some touristy souvenir shops and things. And it's not really that far away from Fukuoka, so it's quite easy to get to. We also went to Yanagawa, which is known as the Venice of Kyushu. That was really beautiful. And we went on a punting trip and there were lots of really nice plants and flowers. It was really picturesque. There's also some other day trips that I looked at, but we didn't end up doing. Uh, one was to uh, Miyazaki Prefecture, to what is it called? 
to Kachiho Gorge and that just looks amazing. It's got deep cliffs going up the side and it's a gorge with a river going through and you can go on a boat ride and there's a little waterfall that comes down and the pictures look absolutely beautiful. But the reason I didn't go there was because you have to take a train and then another train and then a bus or it was quite convoluted. And while I do want to see things and explore, I don't want to be spending the whole time on the train. So I think about two hours is the longest that I would really want to spend traveling for a day trip. So that's why I didn't go there, but it does look really nice. Another day trip we didn't go on was to Nagasaki, which is also quite a long way. It's not too bad. That is in the top half of Kyushu. And that was where the other atomic bomb was dropped. So they have a memorial peace park there, a bit like at Hiroshima. So that would be really interesting place to visit. And there's also some interesting countryside around there. There's another volcano and there's a place called Unzen Hells. Hell means hot springs. So I think that would be a bit like Beppu Hells and the pictures look amazing of that. There's also a village where they have gutters going along the streets and they have fish in them, which looks, which is really cool. They call it the city of carp. There's loads more to do in Kyushu, so I think the best way to explore it would probably be to rent a car or maybe to stay in different places and spend longer just on this island. And if you want to see more about the places we went to, there's separate videos about all of them on my channel. Where to stay? The main centre of Fukuoka is Tenjin, that's where a lot of the shops and shopping malls and restaurants are. So if you want to be in the middle of everything, that's a good place to stay. It's also quite central so you can get to other places easily. I decided not to stay there, but to stay near Hakata Station, which is the main Fukuoka station. And the reason I decided to do that was because I was going to be doing lots of day trips out. And if you're staying near the main station, it means you can just pop there and then get the train rather than having to take the subway or walk to the station. And I found that pretty convenient. That worked out well. Um, it meant we didn't have to get up quite so early to get the train. There was also a lot around that area too. There's a lot of shops and restaurants in the station. There's department stores and things. And we're also really close to Canal City, which is a big shopping mall and also quite an interesting place to visit. So I thought Hakata was a really good place to stay too. When you first arrive, Fukuoka Airport is really close to the city. It's actually kind of inside it. And I've heard people say it's the easiest airport in Japan in terms of getting into the city. It only took about 15 minutes. You take the subway. I can't remember what the line's called, but there's only one, so you can't get it, you can't get it wrong. Next, how to get around. We've got to a lot of places by walking. From Hakata Station, we could walk to Canal City and Tenjin. Other places were a bit far, and for that we've used the subway. There's two or three lines on the subway, and there's also some JR lines, which you can use your JR pass on if you've got them. You can use your Suica card if you have one, or they also have a local IC card, that's a train card, like an Oyster card here, which you can get, and then that will work in other areas of Japan too. And it was pretty similar to getting the subway in Tokyo or the London Underground, really. You scan in with your Suica card, go through, follow the signs and the signs and announcements are all in English as well as Japanese so that wasn't difficult. It's also a lot less busy in Fukuoka than in Tokyo as you'd expect I guess it's not the capital city it's got a much more chilled atmosphere so if if you don't like crowds it's a lot less sort of intimidating from that point of view. Hakata station that's the main station in Fukuoka is also on the Shinkansen line which means you can get here from Osaka and the mainland and there's also a Shinkansen bullet train line that goes down Kyushu. It goes down the west side, so that makes it a bit more difficult to get to places on the east side, but there are other train lines. So the Shinkansen line goes down Kyushu, it goes through Kumamoto, which you might know because of Kumamon, and they also had a bad earthquake there a few years ago. And then it goes all the way down to Kagoshima, which is where we went the other day, and you can see that in my video. So that's really convenient, and it's a great way to get around. It only took was it two hours to get to Kagoshima, which is right at the bottom of Kyushu, which is amazing. I think the, the Shinkansen is so good. It seems so modern. I can't believe they've had it in Japan since the 70s. How long to stay in Fukuoka? In Fukuoka itself, there are things to do and you can go shopping and it is a big city, but it's not packed with tourist attractions. There are things that we didn't do, like there's an aquarium, there's a zoo in Umi no Nakamichi. There is lots of shopping that we haven't really done. 
We've spent a day to two days within Fukuoka. You could maybe spend a little bit longer than that, depending on the pace and how quickly you look around things. But I don't think you'd want to be spending four or five days here, really, unless you are going on day trips. So work out how many things you want to see in the area and around Kyushu and use that to work out how long to stay here. And if you like my dress, my shark attack dress, it's my own design. I always get a lot of comments when I wear this one. You can get it from my website cakeswithfaces.co.uk or etsy.com slash shop slash cakeswithfaces and the links are in the description. So I hope that's given you an overview of Fukuoka and why you might want to go there. While there's loads to do in Tokyo, the rest of Japan is completely different and there's so much more to explore. I know the list of places I want to go to is just never ending. So let me know what you thought in the comments and I'll see you next week. Turn around. <laughs> Great spell. <laughs> Keep spinning. <laughs>